Well, but what you did talk about was how, and this started in Chicago, but it spread to places like Jacksonville and Bronx and so forth, is how drill music started actually mentioning names and started the, the smoking of the dead homies and the disrespect level went on a in a different space. This wasn't done until like, whatever, 10 years ago. Biggie and Pac, whoever else was beefing, cash money and no limit, they were talking about their dead friends. They weren't talking about actually killing people and so forth on records and anything else like that. When you see it now, what do you think? I feel bad for them youngsters. They don't know what a, what awake them in prison. I just met a mm. um, I just met a guy the other day. He was a shot caller for the vice laws in the state, and he had something going on where they had to move to the feds. I said, when you got to the feds, it was different. How huh? I said you wasn't a shot caller anymore. He said, I know. And I said you from Chicago, but it was a guy from Memphis calling the shots. He said, yeah, I had to get used to. It. I said that's how the feds go. See, a lot of people on the streets, you the shot caller in your hood, you running everything, but when you go to prison, it's different. You got to fall in line. Or they're going to get you off that compound, stab you up, try to kill you, beat you up, take your stuff from you, run you off that compound. So when I see these little youngsters, I feel bad. My heart go out to them. Because, like I tell people, I didn't have, you know, my mother tried what she could do, but you know, nobody ain't going to, man, watch out. You know, my mother working. So when I explain to people that I didn't have people to, that grew up in my hood to tell me, hey, Come here, don't sell drugs, don't shoot nobody, don't tote this gun, don't kill nobody. The people who I grew up around, they taught me how to tote the gun, how to pull up at the red light behind the car, give it a little dis if I need to pull off, you know, how to commit a murder, how to be good at my crime. They didn't do what I'm doing now with these youngsters. There's a lot of other people that's doing it too. I didn't have that growing up. I had be the best you could be like the army, but in the streets. So when I look at these little youngsters while I'm doing that, I, I feel bad for them because they don't know how the prison system is. They're getting robbed. Your own homeboys will set you up. They see you going to commissary, trying to rape you. You're doing all kind of dirty stuff, you know? So I just be like, I wish I could. And I know I can't save the world, but if I could just talk to one of them or two of them, and then the peer pressure, you know, they could talk, but man, these little youngsters need help. Well, the old block six just got found guilty of killing FBG Duck. And this one, this one hit close to home because I'd interviewed Duck twice. And in both interviews, I was begging him to move out of Chicago. And in both interviews, he was arguing with me saying that he'll be fine. The first interview, he had already been shot, been stabbed, said he'll be fine. You see a lot of, a lot of Chicago artists who just leave Chicago. You know, um, you, know you, see, you see Chief Keef, he live in Calabasas, around where I live. You don't, you don't see Chief Keefe back in Chicago anymore. I, I don't remember the last time I've heard of Chief Keefe in Chicago. Uh, you know, Dirk, I think, moved to Atlanta. Um, you know, was it King Yellow, I think, moved to, what was it, Vegas or something? Like, you see, you know, Bibby and Herb, I don't think that they really stay in Chicago all that often anymore either. Like, mm -hmm. why, why stay in Chicago when these types of shootings are happening? See, what it is with me, like... I got more in Chicago probably than they got more in Chicago. Like, it's shit that I gotta make sure I take care of here first before I do anything. Like, you feel me? Like, and plus, I ain't I ain't the type of motherfucker that wanna go move to another city because I don't I don't trust nobody. You feel me? I don't trust new people. I don't wanna hang around new people. I don't want no new friends because I don't trust nobody. Yeah, motherfucker could turn fake on you anywhere. You can die anywhere. You can get shot anywhere. You feel me? But it's just like in Chicago, I know better. You feel me? Like I know what to do and what don't to do and what not to do. You feel me? And it's like now how I move around, shit, I'm safe. You feel me? I ain't going to say too much, but you know what I'm saying? I'm groovy. Second interview, his brother had just gotten killed. So I'm like, duck, like, come on. Like, you're seeing the writing on the wall here. Nah, I'm good. I know how to move. And I mean, to his defense, it's not like he got killed in some dangerous project or anything else like that. He was on, like, Rodeo Drive of Chicago. He was in front of the, you know, Shop. the Louis Vuitton Shop. store and everything else like that. But 
six guys took it upon themselves to kill him in broad daylight. And they all got found guilty. And when you look at them, sea murder, not the sea murder that, you know, from New Orleans, but another sea murder, mm -hmm. 32 years old, Kenny Mack, 30, Los, 32, Sea Thang, 24, Muwap, 24, TZ, 34. This is now like, I think, three years later. So you take away three years. These guys were like 21 when this happened. And they're all facing mandatory life sentences. When you look at that situation, how do you feel? That was my situation. Flat, that's my, let me show you something. So this is something you would have participated in during that day. No, no, I'm showing you that's my situation now. It's just like history repeating itself. But here's the thing. I was 23 years old when I went to the feds. So I got a lot of bodies, right? When I first day I come home, Birdman said, get from down there. I got immediate release, so I went straight back to New Orleans. Uh -huh. I was down in New Orleans. I'm like, man, like the walking dead, man. Like, man, what? I was shocked looking at man. But here's his exact word, man, get from down there. I made the call, went up to Fort Worth. Because as you say that, I'm thinking about, wow. Now, what if I'd have been like, man, no, nah, I ain't ducking nothing, man. But I know it's other gangsters. I know the youngsters, it's their turn, next man up. I've been mm -hmm. going 23 years, 10 months. I don't know who is who, who connected with them. Let me get up out the way. Mm. Let me get out the way because and I because let me show you something. I got shot in ninety one. I got shot in ninety four. I got shot in ninety six. I had a colostomy bag, a urine tube. I've been stabbed in the chest. Lungs collapsed. Um, been in a car wreck. Juvenile life state. Fed life. So when you were just explaining that situation about him, I'm like, okay, I didn't been through all that already. Mm. But when the first person told me to get out of there, I got out of there because I was always a thinker. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at, and, and let me tell you, shout out to uh, FBG Butter, because he was smart. He left Chicago. Yeah, I just interviewed him. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I, I talked to him. Yeah, last week. Okay, oh, wow, that's crazy, yo. Mm -hmm. um, and, and another one who I respect, uh, uh, and, I, and I know they've been clashing, but I don't have nothing to do with their beef. Uh, shout out to King Yellow. Mm -hmm. He was smart enough to move. He have a family, he's raised in uh, Vegas. Vegas, right. You know, so I talked to these guys. You know, what's up about the entertainment, and, you know, stuff like that, but, um. I like the fact that they put their pride to the side. Um, they was able to conquer the peer pressure, and I, I'm gonna go. I got a thing for me and my family now, you know. So um, with the young brother, he, and I feel him because be like, I ain't about to leave. I'm a gangster. I ain't about to run me out of my city. I'm, you know, I'm a st you a step. I'm a step. We gonna step. But sometimes it ain't the thing to do. You gotta think for you. Like me, I think for being the next person.